there's a new prep school video. I know you guys cannot wait for those. Just sitting back like, oh, refresh, refresh, new video. No, I do that and my mom does it. Hey guys, I'm Megan Mitchell and I'm here in the Thrive Market Test Kitchen and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a mashed cauliflower. It's vegan, it's keto, and it's Whole30. And it's delicious, and it's awesome. <laughs> and it's smart and it's funny, it's got, it's got it all. It's got the whole package. But before I get started, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're wondering what Thrive Market is, it's an online market that sells organic and non-GMO products straight to your door. So you don't even have to leave your couch, or your chair, or your lazy boy. You don't have to move. All right, let's get started on this recipe. Surprise, surprise, mashed cauliflower starts with cauliflower. And I'm gonna show you how to break down the head because this is kind of an important part, how you actually cut the cauliflower. So I'm gonna leave these in quite large florets. This is a great side dish to bring to Thanksgiving or any sort of holiday, but Mima decides to do Whole30. She's 85, she's feeling like she needs to switch things up and she wants to do Whole30. So this would be a great dish for her. Your cousin is vegan, guess what? Reginald can eat this too. <laughs> so just be careful. I kind of put my knife in and I'll rock it back and forth. Once you get a few florets out, it's a lot easier to break the head down. But this is roughly the size that you want to keep them for this mash. Okay, just gonna, gonna break this baby down. All right, my florets are ready. Let's go over to the stove. So at the stove, clearly, I have a large pot. You can use a stock pot, you can use this is a Dutch oven, whatever, large pot. And I'm using four cups of Pacific Foods vegetable broth. Four cups of water. One can of full fat coconut milk. I'm adding three garlic cloves. And then my cauliflower. Whoop. And you wanna make sure they're all submerged and then a large pinch of salt. Steer it up. And another thing, when you cook potatoes, when you cook cauliflower, you wanna put it in the pot when everything's cold or room temperature. You don't wanna bring this liquid to a boil and then add it because it'll start to cook the cauliflower, the potato from the outside in, and then it can fall apart and then the inside is still raw. So you wanna bring it up together to temperature. Let's bring it up to a boil. And then once it boils, reduce it to a simmer and cook for about 25 minutes until they're fork tender or you put a, a knife in it and it comes out easily. So my cauliflower is fork tender. Let's go mash it up. No, it's not heavy. I'm such a good actress. You really believed it, huh? <laughs> okay, these are ready. I have a food, pro a food processor. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna use a spider, but if you don't have a spider, I highly recommend you getting one because I use mine all the time. Spidey out these guys. And try and remove some of the liquid. I'm gonna add about a half of a cup, but I don't want this mushy, I don't want this watery. When I tested this, I felt so bad because there's a lot of extra liquid, you'll see, from cooking the cauliflower, and I was like, I don't wanna throw this away. I feel really bad and it's great flavors. So. I made a curried cauliflower soup. So I cut up another cauliflower and I added some celery and garlic and curry powder and everything. And I made a soup out of this leftover liquid and the recipe will be below as well. So if you make this and you don't wanna throw away your liquid, make the soup and it's vegan too. Before I add any liquid, I'm gonna blend it and see how it, how it looks. And then I'll add a fourth of a cup or a half a cup if it needs it. I don't know if I even wanna add any liquid. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. The cauliflower absorbed enough of this cooking liquid that I don't need to add any, but if you mash it up, if you food process it up and it looks a little dry or a little chunky, just add a fourth of a cup of the liquid. But she's gorgeous. The coconut milk adds nice creaminess. Uh, the vegetable stock adds more flavor than just water. To me, it doesn't taste coconutty at all. Like. I feel like coconut can be very overwhelming and when it's in a dish, I'm like, oh, there's coconut in here. I don't notice it that much in here. It just tastes creamy to me. Top with some chives. And then I have flat leaf parsley. And I like to top it with freshly cracked black pepper as well. There you go. And this is one serving. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> 
You can definitely double this if it's for a large group, but this should serve, I don't know, four, four people, four or five people, maybe six. I don't know how, I don't know how you like to serve your mash. I don't know if that's your whole plate, but it's easy, it's quick, it's vegan, it's keto, it's paleo, it's whole 30, and it's delicious. I hope you make it. You can find all the ingredients and products that I use today at thrivemarket.com slash prep school. Happy cooking. Thanks for watching. So it's my garlic and herb vegan keto whole 30 cauliflower mash. I hope that's the entire title of this. <laughs> Oh, it's paleo too. Did you see that? What's your? Steam? No, it burped at me and some of it went in my face. This is my money maker. Get it together. So I'm gonna talk before. Okay. Okay, so I'm not just like. 